After calibrating your GEM 2000 in the field, charging your battery, and setting your time and date, you're ready to take readings. We're going to show you how to take readings from three types of measurement devices in the field, AccuFlow wellheads, orifice plates, and a pitot tube. You should have already calibrated your GEM in the field. You should also make sure that you used data field to load your monitoring point IDs and set your time and date. Your battery should be charged. With normal pump use, a fully charged battery will last about 8 hours. You should have enough free memory to store your readings and your hoses and filters should be clean and clear. The two keys to taking good readings are to keep your impact and static pressure straight and to zero transducers before each reading. On the GEM 2000, the top connector on the right side is your static pressure port. The bottom connector is for impact pressure. Using the hose set included with your GEM 2000, connect the clear hose to the static pressure port and the blue hose to the impact pressure port. Make sure the water trap attached to the clear hose is closer to the instrument than to the wellhead. A temperature measurement is required by the GEM to calculate flow. The AccuFlow wellhead designed specifically for the GEM has a temperature port, so attach an accessory temperature probe to the middle connector on the left side of the instrument. Underneath the AccuFlow dust cover, you'll find clearly marked connections for temperature probe, impact pressure, and static pressure. After turning on the instrument and waiting for the self-test to complete, be sure that the GEM 2000 is set to gas extraction mode. The easiest way to confirm this is if option 5 measure flow shows at the bottom of the screen. If not, select option 1 menu, then use the arrow keys to navigate to mode of operation and press the enter key. There you can select gas extraction monitor and press the enter key again. If there are site questions to find, bring up the menu again and select Update Site Data, then answer the questions. The next step is to select an ID from the IDs loaded from your computer. For a detailed description of creating and loading IDs, watch the Creating IDs offline video. Press Option 3 Next ID and scroll to the ID of the device you're going to read. The ID list can be displayed as either a list of IDs only or as a list of IDs along with their info fields. This is the info field you entered in data field for this well. Press 3 to switch between these two formats. After you press enter to select the device, you will be prompted to start a clean air purge. Press enter to start the purge. When it's over, you'll be prompted to connect your hoses. They're already connected, so press 1 to continue. Now you're ready to take a gas sample. You'll sample from the static pressure port. Attach the clear hose to the connector marked static pressure. On your jam, press the pump button to start collecting the gas sample. Let the pump run until the gas compositions on the left side of the screen stabilize. While the pump is running, be sure to watch the clear hose between the water trap housing and the jam. If you see moisture collecting, stop the pump immediately. If this happens, replace the hose and water trap filter. Moisture can cause damage to the gem if it's allowed to get past the water trap. Contact customer service at CES Land Tech if you have any questions. Once the gas composition has stabilized, the next step is to take a pressure reading. Press Option 5 Measure Flow. The message Gas Composition Fixed is displayed to remind you that the current reading has a valid gas sample recorded. You're now taken to the Pressure Reading screen. The gem reminds you that you have to zero transducers before you can take an accurate current pressure reading. To do this, disconnect both hoses. You can do this at the instrument or at the wellhead, whichever is more convenient. Be sure to leave the temperature probe connected since the gas temperature has not yet been captured. Wait until both the static and differential pressure readings are stabilized at or near zero, then press enter. You'll see the message zeroing transducers. After a few seconds, you should see the pressure reading screen again with the message, Pressure Transducer Zeroed. The current pressure readings should both be zero. If they're not, press Enter to zero the transducers again. If they are, press 1 to continue. You'll be reminded to reconnect the hoses and allow the readings to stabilize, so do this. Your gem is taking a pressure reading now, so wait until the values are stable. When you hit 1 to continue, the pressure readings you see will be stored as your initial SP and DP. If you're not using the temperature probe, the gem will ask you to input the gas temperature before you move on. You should see the message Initial Reading Fixed Adjust Wellhead if necessary, and then be taken to the gas flow screen. 
The initial column shows the readings you just stored while the previous column shows the last readings taken at this wellhead. If you adjust the wellhead valve, the new pressure readings will appear in the adjusted column. When your adjusted readings are correct, press Enter to store the entire reading. If you have no temperature probe, you'll be prompted to check the temperature and enter it. Next, you should see the message, Adjusted Reading Fixed. If this wellhead requires a system pressure reading, you'll be prompted to connect your static pressure hose to the system slash header pressure port. On this wellhead, the port is just on the system side of the valve. Your system port may be elsewhere, but it will always be on the system side of the current monitoring point. Connect your static pressure hose to this port and disconnect your impact pressure hose completely. Wait for the reading to stabilize and press 1 to continue. You should see the message, System Pressure Reading Fixed. You'll then be asked the questions and prompted for the comments that were assigned to this well. Once you're done with the questions and comments, you'll see the message, Reading Stored. Now you're ready to move on to the next well. Press 3, select the ID, press Enter, and walk to the next well while the GEM2000 purges itself. You are also able to take measurements from an orifice plate flow device. The orifice plate has a pressure port on either side of it, one on the well side and one on the system side. You should select your orifice plate IDs using the list that shows the description field. The field may tell you whether this is a system side or well side plate. After the ID is selected and the air purged, connect your static pressure hose to the system side port to take your gas composition reading. When the composition readings are stable and you've pressed 5 to accept them, you have to decide which way to hook up your hoses to measure flow. Gas flow is normally measured by connecting your static hose to the system side port and your impact hose to the wellhead side port. However, if the description field for this well said that this is a well side plate, or if you've been told that it is, then you will connect your static hose to the well side port. So, connect your impact and static pressure hoses correctly and take your readings. If you're prompted for a system pressure reading, find the system pressure port, connect your static pressure hose to this port, and leave your impact pressure hose disconnected. The last measurement device we will demonstrate is the pitot tube. They come in a variety of configurations, so yours may not look like this one. This is the Dwyer 160 series pitot tube. The tube has a sensing end that goes into the gas pipe, usually a stopper of some sort, and a section that sticks out of the pipe to connect the sample hoses to. If your pitot tube is not already inserted into the pipe, find the opening in the pipe, remove the stopper, and insert your pitot tube. Whatever the shape of your tube, the sensing end is always directed into the gas flow. So, figure out which way leads to the wellhead and point the sensing end in that direction. For the tube shown, the sensing end is here, the impact pressure is measured at the top, and the static pressure is measured at the side. Other tubes may have different configurations, so make sure you know which port is which on your tube. Connect your blue hose to the impact port and your clear hose to the static port. To take an accurate reading, the sensing end must point directly into the gas flow at the center of the gas stream. If it's off to one side or not parallel to the pipe, even a little bit, your readings will not be accurate. If you could see inside the pipe, it would look something like this. If you move the outside tube a little, the sensing end moves a lot, so be careful. Your pressure reading will be highest when the tube is properly placed. Once you're satisfied with your connections, go ahead and take your readings. Remember to take your time zeroing the transducers and manually enter the gas temperature. Once you've stored readings for all your monitoring points, you're ready to take your instrument back to the computer and use Datafield CS to download your readings.